What's up, it's Ked Fernandez with an episode of Ked's Retro Stuff. Today we're going to be looking at homebrew and pirated video games for the Famicom and the NES. Back in the 90s, when most of the world had a taste of Nintendo with the NES, the Game Boy and the Super NES, there were other countries that didn't get the same treatment. Well, they did, but not officially. A lot of countries in Eastern Europe and Asia got to know Nintendo through cheap knockoff consoles creating what is now commonly known as the Famiclone, unlike the other consoles, the Famicom technology was easy to duplicate. Since the 90s, the Famiclones, most of them being manufactured in China and Hong Kong, formed a popularity of their own in Asian territories. This gave small-time independent developers the opportunity to make and release unofficial Famicom and NES games. Some of these games were unofficial conversions of popular games on other systems. One example would be Street Fighter 2, another would be Sonic the Hedgehog. So we all know by now that in the 90s Sega and Nintendo were rivals, but nowadays Sega make games for Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft. So it was considered in the 90s a little bit shocking to see a Sega game on a Nintendo games console. Even though this was an unofficial release from China, it does play well, the controls and gameplay are the same, the sound could have been better. Some arcade classics that found their way into home consoles in the 90s were also unofficially converted to the Famicom. Mortal Kombat has been converted to the Famicom seven times. Let's look at Mortal Kombat 1. It can be hard to convert a 16-bit game to an 8-bit format. However, it looks okay, what you'd expect from an 8-bit system. The gameplay may not be spot on compared to the official conversions on the Mega Drive and the Super NES. One issue is that it doesn't feature any of the finishing moves which are the trademark of any Mortal Kombat game. Pokemon bootlegs have always been somewhat inventive when it came to knockoff toys and, yes, even video games. Pocket Monster is an example in that category. In this platform type Chinese homebrew, you play Pikachu running around electrocuting the shit out of Pokemon and jumping on shit. But I must say, it's kind of fun once you get into it, so not bad. Next we have Contra 7, not an official release, but a Chinese hack that rips a lot of backgrounds from other games. This may look familiar to those who played Mighty Final Fight on the NES. It's like, hey, let's not make a game from scratch, let's just take a lot of sprites and backgrounds from other games and put them together, and brand it as an original video game. King of Fighters and the Fatal Fury series from SNK has always been popular. Since the arrival of Fatal Fury in 1991, first released in arcades, SNK's back catalogue of fighting games have been revived and converted from arcades to consoles to phones. In the early 2000s, a Chinese homebrew of King of Fighters was released. It may not hold a candle to the official SNK games, but you gotta give them credit for trying. It has most of the characters from the series. The sound is okay, graphic wise it's okay too. The only annoying thing about it is that the whole screen shakes every time you hit or get hit by your opponent. This never occurs in the official SNK games. Even SNK's other series like Samurai Showdown got the Chinese Famicom treatment. This one's an improvement over King of Fighters and like the official conversions on other consoles it's a rather fair and playable port of Samurai Showdown. At least the screen doesn't shake. Hey look, it's Chinese Spider-Man swinging his dick around from town to town in this rather dull homebrew from China that resembles kind of a, an old Atari 2600 game or an arcade game circa late 70s, early 80s. Wisdom Boy is a Chinese puzzle game in which you join up different card shapes. Nothing special here. Little Bitch, oh sorry I mean Little Witch, is a shoot 'em up involving a witch on a flying broomstick shooting at, I don't know, flying things. Uh, kind of reminds me of um, a TurboGrafx-16 game from the early 90s called Magical Chase, but not as enjoyable or fun as Magical Chase. Okay, one more. This time it's not from China, but from Russia. This game is called Warehouse Boy. The entire text is all in Russian, but the whole name of the game is uh, storing boxes in a warehouse. And um, yeah. 
So, okay, that's all for this episode of Kids Retro Stuff. Thanks for watching. I will, of course, do another Famicom NES bootleg related video in the near future. Don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming videos. So, yeah, uh, I'll see you again soon.